titanium white. It's a young colour, it's been with us for less than a hundred years, but it's a fantastic colour that's apparent on pretty much everyone's uh, staple sort of colours. But beware, it can kill your colour so quickly. But spare a thought for titanium white. For nearly a century now, it's been abused, misused and overused by amateur artists across the world. Yeah, this part in Painting Skies is all about white. You use a lot of white to describe light within skies. Um, but the wrong thing to do would be to use this stuff too much straight from the tube. Um, you want to save your lightest lights for making the biggest impacts and you don't want to go crazy with titanium white which obliterates colour completely at times. The last video was all about greys. I carry ivory black and Mars black on my palette. It's fairly simple. Uh, Mars black for its coverage, um, matte properties, quick drying, uh, ivory black for the glazes and thin application and the depth of the blacks. And that's pretty self-explanatory, but the, the whites is a little bit um, more complicated. I have three whites. Uh, two mainly are titanium and zinc white. And the difference between titanium and zinc white, titanium white I would have here, and zinc white here, are the strength of that pigment. Now, tip number one is titanium white you do not want to buy stuff that isn't artist quality. You don't want to go for the student stuff. It's a false economy. It really doesn't have the strength, tinting strength, that titanium white in artist's colours has. And that is the reason you're using the stuff anyway, is its tinting strength and its opacity. Seriously, if you go out and buy artist's quality titanium white, you will notice a real difference in the use of that colour. You should be using a lot more zinc white than titanium white in your mixes because it's much more forgiving when mixing it with your colours. You keep the vibrancy much more. I'm going to take this uh, as an example, uh, my trusty magenta. So I'll just take this magenta colour here And I'll mix it with the zinc white. And then I'll mix it with titanium white. So the titanium white comes much, much lighter, uh, but it, it tends to obliterate and make the colour a little bit milky. It's really great for intensity of light uh, highlights and really making a statement with an opaque brightness and whiteness. Um, but it can be so overused for that reason because adding highlights in a painting, uh, there's nothing more kind of satisfying than adding those highlights. And again, subtlety within painting, much the same as the last episode, is a lot about restraint, stopping yourself. You want to paint things as if they have no highlights at all and then be patient with it and add in small quantities the highlights at the end. Make a statement with your highlights by being restrained with your titanium white throughout the painting. And at the end, when you've got a statement to make, you can really make a statement with the bright lights of the highlights. Okay, so we're going to have a look at the three whites that I use. Uh, first of all, the titanium white we've spoken about, uh, and it's used for its opaque properties. Um, now, zinc white. Zinc white should be used much more for the mixing of, of whites. Um, the difficulty with zinc white is you don't want to use it in the, the early layers of painting. Um, because it, it, it dries quite brittle, so it's prone to cracking, uh, but it dries quite slowly, so you can't work on it for ages, and uh, it's prone to cracking if it dries slowly on early layers. But that is why I use a third type of white called Kremnitz White. 
uh, Kremnitz white I've got from Michael Harding um, and I've managed to get it through a supplier. Uh, you won't get this in most suppliers, uh, the Kremnitz white, because of its toxicity. But if you can get lead white or Kremnitz white, uh, what I like about the Kremnitz is stringy consistency, it's thick consistency, um, which is, is great for uh, impasto in early layers. So you can create impasto, it's got a faster drying time than zinc white which takes forever to dry um, and you're able to, to paint on top of it and uh, and it's it's also got a, a low tinting uh, strength. So um, the thing about low tinting strength uh, is if you don't use a titanium white and use a lower tinting strength white it not only brings out the undertone of the paint but if you're using expensive artist qualities, uh, like say you've, you've spent 200 quid, say you've spent, um, it's 100 quid for cadmium red. If you lighten this using zinc white, you will be using a lot less of the more expensive paint. So you'll actually be saving money if you use uh, a white with less tinting strength. So, so that's something to keep in mind uh, when, when mixing your paint. So not only are you stopping it looking milky uh, with the addition of titanium white, you're keeping the undertones of the paint, you're saving a bit of money and, uh, and, and you're also able to, to keep it less opaque. Now, when you're layering paint and oil paint, uh, it's it, opacity is good to obliterate layers underneath, but you want to be adding uh, glazes as well. You want to be showing uh, paint underneath, and uh, titanium's great to uh, get rid of that, but zinc's good for the opaque glazes. So semi-translucent glazes of 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 white, you would be using zinc white. The other tip I've got is really find a uh, titanium white that works for you, that you like the consistency of. Uh, titanium white is good for its uh, its stringiness as well, sometimes it's real thickness. I, I really like this Blox um, titanium white, which gives a real stringiness and a real uh, body to the highlights. Uh, I quite often use thick highlights, thin paint in the shadows, thin translucent shadows and uh, thick opaque uh, lights and uh, what also I quite like doing within skies as well is obliterating using the titanium white with the opacity and then a glaze on top of that which uh, puts a veil across uh, that abruptness and I, I use zinc white for that. Uh, so I can soften highlights of titanium using zinc white. So I hope that made sense and uh, don't go crazy with those titanium white highlights. Um, if you're adding titanium white straight from the tube make sure that you're doing it in a wet and wet layer so that you are um, you are mixing that titanium white with something else. It's a very, very stark white to use straight up as a highlight. Um, so you need to make sure that you are mixing it in. In your skies, your highlights are going to always have a little bit of yellowy orange in them. Uh, they're going to be warm highlights because the, the sun's um, the sun's light source is a warm source of light and to describe that you need to add warmth to all of your whites. Titanium white is very stark when it comes out the tube and out the tube whites is what a lot of amateurs and novice painters do wrong. They, go, they love putting in those highlights and they're firing them in and, and there's far too many of them. To make the best highlight work it's got to be it's got to have power and it's not going to have power if there's loads of it small quantities make a big statement i hope you enjoyed the video uh, stay tuned for more in this series there's definitely one more to come anyway about uh, painting from photographs 
Okay, thanks a lot. You can follow me on Twitter, Facebook, and indeed subscribe to this channel. Thank you for any donations that you can make on scottnaismith.com slash videos. Thank you.